your eyes Get some rest I'm by your side Lay your head on my chest knitting no pattern and then I don't have to look down except I'm at the end of a row so I do right now <laughs> hello makers welcome back to another studio vlog my name is Joanna and this is stitching the high notes a YouTube channel all about knitting and sewing and stitching and a look behind the scenes of my creative online business where I make handmade project bags for you all and how are you all doing? It's been a couple of weeks. Usually this is a weekly studio vlog and last week I had to take the week off unexpectedly, but I will report and say that things are looking good and better. If you saw over on Instagram, I shared that we ended up having a very scary family health situation and um, not COVID related, thankfully, but um, things are looking better, but it's definitely thrown us all for a loop and looking back February, it's been kind of building up steadily. So, um, kind of feeling grateful, grateful for, you know, my loved ones being out of the woods, but also, um, just grateful to kind of have an action plan going forward and how we can all help out. And sorry, that's kind of cryptic. Just want to keep privacy and stuff, but yeah, just a, it's been a week. This past week has been a week of getting my equilibrium back and kind of getting my creativity back and my rhythm um, as much as possible and ensuring that I'm kind of doing self care and prioritizing that because I'm definitely a, a caregiver type. I love to take care of people and to cook for them and um, to you know, help them out. And sometimes that can take over me taking care of myself. So this week has been really focused on that as well. 
and there has been knitting. So let's dive right into it. A knitting update on my tender sweater. So I'm making this as my first sweater for the year. We are having a make along for a year of sweaters over in our Ravelry group. All the links to everything I mentioned and where you can find me on social media, etc., are down below in the description box. And I am first making the tender sweater by Melody Hoffman using gorgeous yarn by the Royal Bee Yarn Company in a 100% merino base. And y'all, it's a bottom up and I finally finished the pattern part of the textured pattern part of the sweater. It's when I hold it up to myself, it's looking like it's going to be the perfect size. <sighs> I love it so much. So yesterday I finally started the stockinette, which you can see right here, which is just blissful knitting in the round and I don't have to look at it. I can watch TV and it's just mind numbingly beautiful. <laughs> Famous last words as I'm like dying, but I have, I think the pattern says a couple of inches or so of this. And then I separate already for the sleeves, um, for the arm holes and the sleeves and the shoulders. So of course I'm holding it up. It's going to be you know, I'm trying not to add too much length. I know a lot of us do this with sweaters. I was talking to some of my friends about this the other day. Like we think, oh, it's going to be too short and then we'll add on more length. And then after blocking, you know, it's like way too long with sweaters. So I'm really trying to keep to the pattern and the pattern lengths. Um, and if need be, I can always like adjust it and go back, especially since I am now at a stockinette portion. So I am just absolutely loving it. I'm still alternating skeins. I'm getting really close to the end of my original two skeins, so I'm gonna have to wind up some more here pretty soon. Uh, this one is smaller because I used it for my gauge swatches. And yeah, so I'm just alternating every two rows now, and I'm now, I literally just started, and I, the stockinette like late last night. And so now is the time for me to look up that helical um, alternation of skeins technique. So I'm going to look that up, a jogless join, if you will. So, and I know some of you have sent me some alternate ways as well. So I'm just going to do some more research and I'll share back next week what I end up doing. And, but that's been the knitting. And then I'm getting ready. I'm already have an eye to the next thing that I want to cast on. Let me find it here on Ravelry. It's still so weird to be able to use my phone while I'm vlogging and chatting with you all. Um, so in my queue, I have like all of the things that I'd like to make this year. I'll leave a link down below and put a little thing up here as well um, for my 2021 intentions and goals for making and more um, for video. So you can kind of see where I'm going here. But the next one I want to make is the Kayla, I think is how you say it. Um, Tea. It's a knitted t-shirt uh, because I want to try to make things in season a couple of months before I would like be wearing them. And so this is by Megan Nodecker of Pip and Pin Designs uh, from the Rainforest Knits uh, ebook. And oh, I love it so much. It's got this beautiful like lace pattern up the top and it just looks like the perfect like summer, springy, late spring um, thing to wear like while I'm walking outside or hanging out with my friends hopefully soon social distance outside uh, I don't know what yarn I want to use I can't remember I think I'm gonna need like three or four skeins for the size I want to make uh, and I don't have enough in my stash behind me I really only have single skeins for when I was just like all oh, the sock yarn all the time a couple of years ago. Um, so, and I really, again, I'm wanting one of my goals this year is to keep to using local yarns first and really seeking those out. So I've got my eye on some bases at Verb for Keeping Warm. Um, I'd really like to use an organic cotton base. Um, so, and they have a really lovely one. So I'm going to take a look and see if it if it's in fingering, I can't remember if it's DK or what it is or sport or if it is sport, I think I can use it for fingering pattern and just, you know, keep in mind some of the adjustments and definitely do a gauge swatch. 
<laughs> so something to look forward to in the coming weeks. But I'm really excited to see how far I'm gonna get now that I'm in the stockinette on this. I wonder if it's gonna go faster, if it's gonna go about the same because while the texture can be, and this is just alternation of knits and pearls, it can be um, slower in terms of knitting because of that. It's because the fabric is textured, it grows f quicker. So it, it's gonna be interesting to see where I how far I get. The progress keeper I have on here is a friend, for, uh, is a gift from my friend Nicole. Um, and that is where I was at last, at, at the end of the last studio vlog, so two weeks ago. So I picked up steam after basically a week off of knitting uh, and sewing. And I have been sewing, let me tell ya. I uh, thank you all so much for your orders and excitement about the Scrappy Notions bags. Um, there's still some in the shop and they've all been sent out. I think many of you have finally started to get them. I know there were a lot of delays because of that last crazy round of ice and snowstorms in the Midwest and the East. So fingers crossed they're coming soon. Um, but I've been preparing for, finally again, preparing for the big update on Monday, March 1st at 9 a.m. Um, and I have just been kind of catching up. So I'm going to be doing a pre-order, um, a pre-order model again, which really was a bummer after really getting, picking up steam and working towards my goal of having everything really pre-made before I, um, put it in the shop. And that's still my goal for this year and to work toward that model. But it's nice to know that I have, uh, the ability to do pre-orders and kind of know how that workflow works uh, for myself when things happen, inevitably happen like the health emergency in my family. So um, these bags that I'll show you here in a minute are going to be pre-ordered. They'll be sent out within two weeks or 10 business days. Um, and yeah, anyway, let me grab them. They're really, really cool. We're gonna have the return of a favorite of y'all's and my favorite books and tea bags. They'll be in all of the bag types, sweater, maker's briefcase, drawstring, notions bags, and notion or uh, needlework pouches. Um, so those are gonna be in the shop on Monday. And then I whipped up the Sweeter Than Honey bags. These are the fabrics that were used for um, the collaboration that I had earlier this month, I can't believe that was in, like we're still in February technically today, um, but earlier this month with Legacy Fiber Arts and we did a special collaboration kit with a drawstring bag and a uh, yarn dyed uh, to match the fabric. And they've since um, started dyeing that colorway on uh, various bases and now I'm excited to say that uh, coming to the shop will be the sweeter than honey fabric and all of the various bag types so I'll just show you really quick because in a couple minutes I'm gonna hop on with my patreon peeps to chat with them you might hear like a little buzz they're starting to chatter away on discord <laughs> so we have drawstring bags good old dress and so there'll be more of these in the shop and these are with a cotton twill and they just pull like that and they're beautiful. Everything has quilt batting inside so they're nice and sturdy but they're also very squishable and they can go in your bag or purse. These fit maybe like three skeins of yarn, like a good size shawl project and it's been holding my sweater project and now it's about to graduate. This is about to graduate too. How about this for a segue? the sweater size bag yay so this is a big old bag with a box bottom um that fits a scrappy blanket it could fit like one and a half sweater bags it could a lot of people put their various project bags inside this it's got a handle cotton lining zippered zipper tabs i'll hide my face <laughs> zipper tabs Oh, and I love this fabric so much. I feel like you can really get a good chunk of this fabric with such a wide cut. Uh, oh, love it, love it. Then we have little Notions bags will be in the shop. 
These are so cute. A lot of people use these for holding their face masks in their purse or just little doodads, their tape measures, their stitch markers. We've got needlework pouches. Oh, I love these so much. So in love with these. And I took some photos because I'm trying to be better to show you all what it really looks like. But it's got this pocket, a, a, you know, the main pocket for like your needlework project or whatever you want to put. People put English paper piecing and stuff in there. Or, you know, you can use it for whatever. Or like their planner and their like sketchbook and stuff. And then this front pocket is where you can put like notions. You can even like organize it with your notions pouch in there. And I brought over actually something that I'm getting ready to work on to show you. I'm finally gonna start stitching again. Not cross stitch, but embroidery because I really wanna work on embroidery this year. And this is something that I bought for myself. How cool is this? This is uh, by Auburn Hoops. I'll have a link down below. Um, and oh, I can't wait. It's like this really cool like little bookshelf. So as I finish books, I'm going to start um, embroidering those in. It's a really, I'll, I'll talk more about this in a future vlog, but oh, I love it. So it fits perfectly in here, this little project. It can fit like your standard kind of eight by eight Q-snap. And you can kind of see the room that it has up on the top. This isn't quite eight by eight, but. But if you have a bigger project, then there are the Maker's Briefcases. Ta -da! So these are great. They're very, very nice and sturdy. Um, they've got, in, in terms of the interfacing and stuff, protecting your project. They're nice and roomy, can fit like an 11 by 11 project in there. And they've got a pocket inside with two sides. So there's kind of, it's so awkward to show, but there's like a little divider here. So they're separated. Um, so you can put your scissors down here and then attach it with a fob to this D ring and you could put your thread and stuff in here. So you've got that. And people use this for various projects too. Like my friend does um, like a lot of beading and um, she makes like kind of chain mail-y kind of stuff. And so she uses this for her projects. And so you can fit like a whole like thread case in here and all kinds of stuff. So that will all be in the shop on Monday, tomorrow if you're watching this on Sunday. But I'm going to go chat with my peeps, my friends, and catch up with them, knit a little bit more. So I'm going to put a stitch marker on this so you can see, we can all see how far I can get in an hour and a half of knitting. <laughs> and I'll check in with you all a little bit later. Got about three rows, I would say, done on my sweater. So it's flying. I graduated it to the sweater bag, so I'm gonna keep one of the Sweeter Than Honey bags for myself. And I am actually getting ready to go up to see the family for the weekend. They've been totally vaccinated and I've been self-quarantined. I always feel like I have to preface that. But, um, but I wanted to show you before I wrap up today, uh, the windowsill and kind of go over my early stage plans for it. So let me sit down and show you. So here is the little windowsill. Usually this guy lives right here, but I'm going to prop you up right there. And I've got a couple of plants that I've gotten in the last few months. And then my little strawberry plant, which is totally back to life. Thank goodness. Let me put you all down. Here we go. We're gonna pivot you onto the sill here. So what we have is my strawberry plant, which is still alive and kicking. It just about died about a month ago after I'd been home for a little bit. And it sprung back to life and it's doing really well. Plus the light has shifted, the sun has shifted so that I'm getting more light in my window right now. So we'll see. And I planted this from seeds uh, last, I want to say April, when I was daily vlogging. So a lot of you might have seen 
me plant my lettuce has since died many moons ago <laughs> um and i don't have any herbs going so i think i want to plant some more herbs these are just like little succulent type things this is a i think a money plant is what it's called i'll put it on the screen what it is and then i have some like empty canisters like this one was a basil plant um that i got at the grocery store and i really liked the little like planter so oh no it was a succulent it was a succulent interesting i think i kept my basil plants in there so super cute and then this one nothing i wonder if it's like a cursed thing <laughs> but i've tried to grow two things in this and it just doesn't work and i think partially the the soil has gone down like i just need to dump this out but it just isn't getting enough light for the windowsill um but yeah so i think i'm gonna make i think i'm just gonna get some already grown i don't know how much i'm gonna grow from seeds because i don't get quite enough light i have learned um i think maybe mint might be okay although i planted mint next to the strawberry and maybe the seeds were just duds but that's why the strawberry is just all the way over here and i just I don't have it in me yet to replant <laughs> this. I think I would want to wait until it grows even hardier. But I think I might do just maybe some mint from from seeds in, it, in its own container because I know it can kind of overtake uh, anything that it's growing next to. But I think in terms of basil, like herbs that I use all the time in the late spring and summer, I want to get already grown ones and plant them in um like the lettuce kind of thing let me just go get it hold on i have this thing which had was like a kit to grow different types of romaine lettuce or different lettuce types and it just was too high for my windowsill for anything to get light it was amazing that i got enough of the lettuce sprout the one lone lettuce sprout that survived <laughs> um but i think if i get some stuff that's already grown and can find the light easily on the cell that would be wonderful so like rosemary basil i think thyme i use a lot of recipes with thyme as well and just have like three of them in here i think that'd be really lovely and then i want to get some more succulents um maybe for this guy for this one right here i think that'll be nice but otherwise i don't think i'm gonna get go too crazy I think until I have a larger place or which honestly I don't know if I'll move to a larger place someday I'd rather focus on buying my own home and I'd really love I don't know how much I've talked about this on here but my goal is to own a tiny home someday just a really small cottage home or even a tiny home um, that's on a flatbed that eventually can move if need be. I watch countless tiny home videos on YouTube and I just think it's really, really cool. It, it, it's a tangible thing that myself and a lot of people can work towards. And I like the fluidity and mobility of it uh, down the line, but that you always have your home. And I don't really need a big space. I actually really love, I've always loved living in a smaller space um, and just living a really simple lifestyle. So my dream would be to have a tiny home with like an attachment little room that would be like my sewing studio a big porch and then a huge garden and be as self-sustaining down the line as possible that would be a dream that would be amazing and yes i am aware of all the work and the composting toilets and i am down for it i'm here for it i had to switch the old battery but that was also a sign that i am rambling <laughs> and i do need to hit the road so sorry this was a bit of a shorter visit. I hope it was a good one. So good to chat with you all again. And I look forward to next week and a week full of sewing and making and making more headway on my tender sweater and hopefully picking out the yarn for my next project. I did get some good advice from um, my friends on the Stitch and Chat. So to be continued there. 
But let me know what you are planning to grow if you've already planted your seeds for spring and for the season, uh, what you're looking forward to in spring, and also what you're making right now. I'd love to know and for us all to chat in the comments down below. I will see you all next week. Be well. Bye.